Here he is, everybody, the great Jonah Carey. What's happening, Jonah? Mr. Damashek, when you say the game of life, you mean the board game, of course. That's the one I'm talking about. Yeah, I don't I, I, I don't care to involve myself too deeply in, you know, I interacting with actual human beings or anything. No. Just, you know, sequestered oh. in my home, you know, mainly. How are you, Joni? Enjoying the baseball playoffs so far? It's so fun. You know, there's a philosophical discussion. I'm sure we're going to get into the nitty gritty. But uh, as you know, I grew up a fan of the Montreal Expos. I'm from a native of Montreal, born and raised. And, of course, they don't have a team. They haven't for 12 years. And I never adopted a new team. I didn't go for the Nationals because eh, it's not the same thing. I didn't go for the Blue Jays because – I resent the notion that just because you're from Canada, so wait, if you're from Boston, but the Red Sox fold, you should become a Yankee fan because they live in, they're in close proximity. I don't buy any of that either. So I don't root for a team. Hmm. And the end result is I end up watching these games, you know, that Cubs-Giants game three, which was a bonkers game, the clincher of the Jays-Rangers uh, series, which was a bonkers game. Last night's game with the Cubs and Giants was insane. And I'm just rooting for good baseball, and there's been tons of good baseball, and I don't have to – have my heart broken or, or whatever. Listen, I'd rather have my team, but this is not a bad runner up. I don't feel too bad about just enjoying every game and not worrying about it. Yeah, you know, I you know, I love football. Well, listen, I love all sports. I love hockey sure. and so on. There's something about October baseball that you feel every pitch and it and it resides in your brain for years or decades after. If it's your team or even if it's not, there's something about the one on one of every pitch and you know every moment the the 15th i will now I'm suddenly waxing uh prosaic about baseball as if uh, no one's ever done that before i don't mean to do that but uh but either way the cubs have advanced which is which is odd stuff that they overcame a deficit it looked like oh no this is gonna happen to the cubs again but it did happen to clayton kershaw again kind of sort of where's your concern level on where he is mentally and otherwise after giving up those two runs early and then uh, getting three hung on him late i will direct the folks to the twitters uh, at jonah carey and after the sixth inning i tweeted wait, why is Clayton Kershaw batting exactly? He was going to hit, and then he mm -hmm. was going to pitch in the seventh inning, and then, of course, he loads the bases, and then their bullpen gives it up. Dave Roberts was managed very inconsistently last night, uh, yesterday, rather, and, and that, I have a problem with that. You know, the idea that you want to go to your best guy. All right, let's say you think Clayton Kershaw is your best guy. I don't know that I necessarily agree. I don't think those rules are immutable. I think you have to consider context. Clayton Kershaw, after a bunch of pitches on short rest, maybe not. But fine, let's say you think that's the case. That's already bad. Then you make it worse by bringing in Pedro Baez, Luis Avilon. I think 72-year-old Kent Colby made an appearance in this game. <laughs> this is not a well-managed game, Dave Damashek. If you've got a big situation and this is the game on the line, listen, there's only one manager in baseball who's willing to put his best reliever out there, uh, no matter what the spot, ninth inning or not, and that's Terry Francona with Andrew Miller. So I grant that the Dodgers weren't good at Kenley Jansen, but they have a guy named Joe Blanton who's become a really dominant reliever. Where was he? You know, why is this? A, it used to be that, a, you know, we save our closer for the ninth inning, which is already bad, and we thought that's the reason the Orioles are not in the playoffs anymore, by the way, they didn't use Zach Britton against the Blue Jays. But, you know, you've got this situation where, okay, the ninth inning is not sacred. The eighth inning is not sacred. The seventh inning is not sacred. Everybody has these roles. You're the 17th guy out of the bullpen on a full moon, you know, on a day ending with Q, and it's ridiculous. If the game is on the line, just bring in your best guy. Roberts is very lucky that Chase Utley came through because the Dodgers could have been eliminated with all that uh, flim-flam going on for the manager. It really is. a Flim-flam, nonsense, hooey, applesauce, call it whatever you want. That would have been the story for today. Today and for another grim offseason, and we'll see what happens in D.C. on Thursday night. Uh, but uh, meantime, though, Jonah Carey, and I do want to mention, Jonah Carey is everywhere. Even if you want to avoid him, you can. He's got the podcast, <laughs> Jonah Carey Podcast. Find that on iTunes. He's got a new show on CBSSports.com. You want to find that one. He is an author a couple of times over. Uh, he's, uh, you know, like I say, Jonah, at Jonah Carey. Find him on Twitter, and uh, and there you shall find some, uh, some gems on baseball and beyond Jonah I said at the very top of this show today that I was going to own this for all would-be baseball fans all people who like to consider themselves diehard sports fans I know almost nothing about the Cleveland Indians and this is embarrassing okay. let uh, give us a little uh, get to know the Cleveland Indians uh, for the next 90 seconds or so would you yeah, well, first of all, so I read CBS Sports is where I'm doing most of my writing during the playoffs, and I wrote a very long piece 
you know, this is like more detail than you can handle even. The Indians' third starter by default is a guy named Josh Tomlin. Basically, the Indians had a great season, but two of their three best starters, Carlos Carrasco and, Dan- and Danny Salazar, got hurt. So now they're going with Corey Kluber and pray for an Uber so you can bring in more pitchers. That's basically what they're trying to do right now. And as a result, this guy, Josh Tomlin, who throws 87 miles an hour and gave up 36 home runs this year, is pitching huge games. But he completely shut down the Red Sox, and it did kind of a pitch-by-pitch account of what happened with Tomlin pitching, and it's very interesting. If their secondary guy, Tomlin, a guy named Trevor Bauer, UCLA kid, if those two guys perform, the rest of the Indians roster is really good because Kluber might win the Cy Young. He's a great number one starter. They've got this guy, Andrew Miller, who's a great reliever and is being used, as I mentioned before, differently than anybody else. Terry Francona brought him in in the fifth inning the other day and had him pitch from the fifth bridging all the way through to almost through the seventh. So they've got a very interesting strategy where they're not even worrying about, oh, Clayton Kershaw and rest or whatever. They're just saying, you know what, if our starting pitcher even sneezes, he's out of the game because we got this Andrew Miller guy. So that's pretty interesting. And then the rest of it is just a fun, opportunistic team. They have a shortstop named Francisco Lindor, who's really, really good. He's got a chance to be like – he's like Ozzie Smith, but a really good hitter, basically. That's how good he is. And a bunch of other really interesting young guys. So it's a fun team to watch. Uh, I think it's going to be a great matchup with the Blue Jays. That's the series that I'll be covering for CBS. I'm on ALCS duty. And uh, I, maybe I'm the first person to say it in a while, but I'm super excited to go to Cleveland. I haven't been there in 20 years, <laughs> and, uh, and I'm excited to cover this ALCS. It's actually – I think if you – You know, even if you don't know that much about either of these clubs, you will get to once you watch these games. It's going to be some fun games. Well, yeah, it's uh, Cleveland, by the way, has a chance to be a pseudo city of champions all of a sudden. They're chasing their second ring in the calendar year. It's crazy stuff. And we're keeping our fingers crossed for the Cleveland Barons. Maybe they could pull off a Stanley Cup as well. We'll see. Uh, no, they ha- – well, I don't want to embarrass you on, on on national radio and television here, Jonah. So so let's move on here. Last couple minutes here with the great Jonah Carey from CBSSports.com. Track him down uh, there and uh, and elsewhere. Um, Jonah and I, a few years ago – we've talked about this uh, a little bit uh, here and there – about five, six years ago, we were out having a drink in Los Angeles, and uh, we just started to talk about what if you could just be a GM for all the sports teams in your town, not just for one team, rather for all the teams. It's like I could say to Chris Brockman, Boston sports fan, we'll give you Ben Roethlisberger and you give us David Ortiz back kind of mm-hmm. trades. And this spawned the League of Leagues, and uh, we now are in a fantasy league that has NFL, MLB, and NBA, and you can trade within the leagues and everything else. Damashek has the most points in uh, in the NFL league, don't, doesn't he, Jonah? Yeah, your NFL team is dynamite, man. You've actually run into some bad luck. This is the thing that I, I you know, I, you know, my ambivalence towards fantasy football. I try not to be too critical, but there's a, there's a little bit of randomness, and you should be five and zero oh by all accounts. But it's kind of who do you face on a given week, and you know, you could put up one thirty five, and the other guy could put up one thirty six, and that's the end of that. But you have a great club, uh, no question about it, and. Uh, it's exciting. It's, it's, it's really this, this idea that you could trade anybody for anybody. There have been blockbusters. We've seen Kevin Durant traded for like four guys from three different sports. And the first trade in the history of the league was I traded forgettable relief pitcher Chad Qualls for number three Arizona Cardinals uh, wide receiver John Brown. So you go from <laughs> the obscure to the sublime. Maybe the obscure is the sublime. Uh, but it's super fun. And honestly, I cannot play fantasy sports normally ever again i'm not in any nor i I used to be a big fantasy baseball guy you know i have a bunch of leagues this is my only one fantasy basketball is my only one football is my only one i have a job and kids and whatever but i definitely try hard in this league because it's so interesting and i think about permutations all the time i i do too and we just are about to complete our second our 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 two-year window of this because you need to do it for at least two years each time and then we'll reboot and do again real quick chris's i start with you law let's say you're in a league of leagues who's the first overall pick First overall pick in a league of leagues. See, I was going to say, are you guys also in a Dungeons and Dragons and World of Warcraft league where you're crossing? Oh, this, this is little, too. This, this, this is skew- below me, to be honest. I mean, <laughs> All right, this moving is so on. Dirty. No, cut his mic off. I'm <laughs> uh, uh Steph Curry or Mike Trout? That's. I think that you're you're heading in the Curry. right direction. Jonah Curry. Carey, how say you? Yeah, Curry is the right answer, and I went NBA pretty heavy. My first two picks were Damian Lillard and John Wall. Uh, I think it was drafting like number 10 overall. So that, that's about right because you've got a scarcity in NFL where there's only a certain number of stars. The roster's smaller, but it's not as unpredictable or it's much more predictable than NFL. If you took, 
you know, Jamal Charles last year very high up. You'd say, well, Jamal Charles, he's great. I mean, that hasn't happened. Le'Veon Bell is another one. And, uh, of course, Dave owns Le'Veon Bell, and he has been very good when he's on the field, but he's had issues. Basketball, you take the studs and you go with it. So that is the move. That is the strategy. But, uh, listen, we've seen people succeed in this league. We're in year two with all kinds of different strategies. That's the beauty of it. You can win in all kinds of ways, and it never stops being fun. I did use the sixth overall on Levy and Bell because Trout was gone, yep. and, uh, yeah, Steph Curry was gone, and K- KD. So, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to, to doing this one uh, again when we get it going. In the meantime, hey, real quick before we let you go, Jonah Carey, just lay it on us. Who's gonna Who's gonna advance to the NLCS? Uh, I think the Cubs will beat either the Nationals or the Dodgers. I just think they're a better ball club than either. I'll say Cubs Blue Jays World Series, which would be a, a lot of fun. Those would be two fun cities to travel to uh, to be able to observe. And, and uh, listen, I don't think people in the states realize. So the city of Toronto is on fire. Like as much as that's crazy for Chicago, that would be two insane, insane towns. This would be some great atmospheres in both cases. Looking forward to it either way, and uh, always look forward to Kibitzin with you, Jonah Carey. Thanks so much for the time, pal. Talk to you soon. And again, Jonah Carey, CBSSports.com. Follow him throughout this postseason like you heard he's covering the ALCS. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.